What's up, people? Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Today, we are going after one of my all time favorites taco. So, here in Hawaii, we call taco he'e or squid. Not sure why we call it squid because it's an octopus, but that is beside the point. Let's talk business. So, before we get started, we're gonna crush up this leaf called napaka. Mix it with some water, scrub the inside of our mask, and that's gonna keep our taco vision 2020 the whole day. So here in Hawaii, taco are found in deep and shallow water. I'm not a deep diver, so we're gonna stay in the shallows today. Mr. Octopus live in holes that they dig out from the reef. So what we're looking for today are overturned white rocks, colored rocks, broken crustacean shells, and broken seashells. So you found the white rocks, you found the shells, but that doesn't mean you found the taco. So in taco diving, this does unfortunately happen a lot. Not sure if a diver got him or if Neil got him, but he's not home. But don't be discouraged. Keep going and you will find someone home. So I'm going to use my taco prodding stick here, homemade by the way. And we're gonna gently prod him until he gets mad enough to leave his home. That's when we grab him by the head and that's pretty much it. So we have three types of octopus here. Day taco, night taco, and rock taco. What I'm going after right now is day taco. They get the biggest. The current Hawaii state record is 25.95 pounds, which is ridiculous. So the minimum legal take size for taco in Hawaii is one pound. A one pound taco is pretty small to be honest, and when you cook them, they shrink a lot. So I try not to take anything under two pounds. So some taco are super smart and hide their homes well. This guy is not one of them. Look how obvious it is. Good for me, bad for him. So my favorite kind of taco are the ones that live in extremely shallow water. This four and a half pounder was sitting in just two feet of water. Notice all the colored rocks outside of its hole. So I like catching taco because no matter what way you make it, it's always gonna be good. Here in Hawaii, we use it a bunch of different ways. Taco poke, grilled taco, smoked taco, fried taco, just to name a few. The season for taco in Hawaii is open year round, with the peak being September to December, where you see a lot of bigger ones come into shallow water to breed. Taco are pretty good at camouflage. They don't have spikes or fins or other defense mechanisms, so staying hidden is your best bet. In fact, people swim over taco all day without even noticing them. Watch his taco as he emerges from his hole, changes his color, and even changes his texture. Pretty nuts. Taco is also a favorite bait of shoreline fishermen. Blinking taco that is still changing colors is said to be the best. 
They use it to catch fish such as amberjack and giant trevally, known here as ulua. This was probably one of my best taco dives. To preserve the memory, I'm gonna make a gyotaku impression. Don't know what that is? Step into my office. Gyotaku began in 18th century Japan. Gyo translates to fish. Taku translates to impression. Before the invention of cameras and photography, Gyotaku was used by fishermen to record their prize catches. This unique art form uses real fish and sea creatures to create one-of-a-kind life-size impressions. Every single detail is accurately captured, forever paying honor to its life and beauty. Traditional gyotaku are printed in black only. For my style, I like to use color. I think color really brings it to life. The ink or paint easily washes away with water so it can be safely consumed. Nothing is ever wasted. Now that the art is complete, let's see what else we can do with this beautiful taco. We are gonna make taco medallion carpaccio. First thing you wanna do is wash with Hawaiian salt to remove the slime. Rinse well with water. And we're gonna remove the beak, the eyes, and the guts. So we're gonna pop that bad boy right into our pressure cooker. It'll save you time and stress, and you don't have to worry about it. Just set it and forget it. And we can't forget about our secret ingredient, some beer for tenderizing. Taco can get chewy or tough sometimes, but with beer, it gets really tender and soft. So I'd fill it up, I don't know, like three quarter way. That should be good. So we let the taco pressure cook for a bit. Let's check it and see what it looks like. Oh my god, that looks amazing. So to check if it's finished, you're going to want to take a fork or a chopstick and poke it through the fattest part of the tentacle. If it goes through without resistance, you're good. It's finished. For the taco medallions, it's so important you get as much water out of the taco as possible. So once you got your pieces dried, you're going to arrange them evenly onto a foil sheet. This step right here is so important. You're going to shape your taco medallions here. So you want to roll tightly and evenly. Roll, tuck, roll, tuck. If you were to cut these open right now, they would just fall apart. So in order to preserve the shape, we're going to partially freeze them. In the meantime, while they're freezing, we're going to start prepping some vegetables. We got our cherry tomatoes. A little cucumber. So I'm going to do a katsudomuki cut. 
basically instead of cutting the cucumber in quarters and taking the seed out you're going to cut the desirable parts from around the seed of the cucumber you can change it to be thin or thick depending on what you're going for So we let the taco sit in the freezer, maybe 45 minutes to an hour and a half. You just gotta keep checking it. You don't want it to be fully frozen, just partially frozen. So now when you cut into it, you get the perfectly round shape with several different textures in one bite. Now don't forget, you saw this here first on Sakana Syndicate. All right, now is the fun part, seeing it all come together. So you can get creative with the plating. I just like to do a round circle. We're gonna add some Hawaiian salt. Some extra virgin olive oil. some fresh lemon juice. So for this carpaccio, I went with pretty simple flavors. The taco in itself is delicious and has a great texture, so you don't want to mask that with too much flavors. So you can start adding your cherry tomatoes now. A little sprinkle of tobiko, which is flying fish eggs. This one in particular is infused with wasabi, so it gives it a nice kick. Final step, we're going to top with some sea grapes. These are interesting. They're crunchy, salty, and taste like a bite of the ocean. Great texture. And there you have it, guys. Taco Medallion Carpaccio with locally harvested octopus. Now's my favorite part, taste time. So if you did it right, when you scoop the medallion, it's not going to fall apart. It's going to stay one continuous piece. Just like this. All right, here we go. The thing I like about the taco medallions is you're not biting into just one fat leg. You're biting into the thicker part, the skinny part, the tips of the legs, the tentacles, you get all those different textures in one. So that paired with the brininess from the sea grapes, you got your oils going on, citrus going on, the wasabi tobiko gives it a nice zing. It's just really good and balanced. All right guys, this has been Taco Carpaccio. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you on the next episode.